What's going on YouTube? This is What Would Josh Do? And I've got a video that I'm hoping to make very quick. This is going to be a video showing you how to set up the Kingston Wireless Mobile G2 uh, mobile streaming device. So I've had a chance to play with it before doing this part of the video. So I'll be able to give you a better look at first setup and stuff. So um, I haven't reset it, but I'm going to show you how to connect it to your Wi-Fi because before you connect it to your Wi-Fi, if this little light right here isn't lit up, then you've got to take your phone and disconnect from your router and connect to this thing directly. So you won't be able to use any data or go to the Play Store or do anything when you have it that way. So I'm going to show you how to connect this thing to the internet and stream everything from all of your devices. So first things first, you need to turn it on. Now if you just tap it, it checks the battery to see that it's working. And then if you hold it, it'll actually turn it on. You got to hold it for three seconds. And then you got, you've got to wait for this thing to create a little Wi-Fi hotspot for all of your devices to connect to. So we're going to go ahead and use our HTC One M8 here. And then you need to go to the Play Store and download an app from Kingston. So you can just search for Kingston in the Play Store here. And when you do, you will find this app called mobile light right here so we'll just press install and then accept and you wait a minute for it to install all right so we have the app installed now we're going to go ahead and open it up and you just quickly go through all these right here and then you press on the screen or the back button yeah the back button and you got see it's not going to find your mobile light yet you've got to go to your wi-fi and then you've got to connect to this thing Mine's the, that, that's the model number right there, M7WG2, so we're connected to that. Now we're not going to be able to access the internet, the Play Store, or anything. And so now we're going to have to talk to this thing. So we don't have any storage on here at the moment. If we go to this one, you're going to see nothing's popping up at all. That's where you have awesome expandable storage with this device. You can hook a flash drive into it and give yourself you know, 16, 32 gigs, or possibly even more. And you also have an option of using an SD card. I don't have a Kingston SD card, unfortunately, so I have to use the one from a different company. And I also formatted it EXFAT. That way I could store a file larger than four gigs on there. So we're going to go ahead and put that on there. I have loaded a 4K video and a 1080p video, so we're going to see how well this thing handles streaming 1080p and 4K. So let's go ahead and set that down. Please note that this light is not flashing, and I fully charged this with a micro USB charger, so like that you would use with your HTC One, Galaxy S5, and etc. So any of those devices. So now on here, you're seeing two options: USB One, which is that USB stick right there. And then when you go back, you have SD card one. So it is loading these two videos. This one's 4K and this one's 1080p. So it's loading those fine. Let's try the Destiny Alpha. I, this was a beta that I was part of and I uploaded some Destiny videos. They're still on my second channel or my gaming channel, sorry. The default Android player may not support uh, files larger than two gigs. So I highly recommend checking out one of two apps, Dice Player, or Archos Video Player. Archos has another app that'll let you uh, have all the codecs on your device. So you can play MKVs. Dice Player, you can play MKVs, but you've got to do some extra little thing, add third party codec support. Uh, I can actually link to an article that shows you how to do that. So uh, Dice Player is a very good option. Do not show again. And we're going to try to use um, any of these. Let's try Dice Player just once. And. We're going to see how well this plays. It took me a second because I was busy. So, oh, there we go. Alrighty, so as you can see, there's absolutely no stuttering at all. And we're streaming this from a device. So, and this is very important. Say you have a... Moto E or a Moto G or a Nexus 5 with 16 gigs and you've got all of your storage used up. You, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn down the audio, but uh, you don't have to have the content stored on your device. You can actually have it on here and then your phone, your tablet, NVIDIA Shield, all of those devices can pick up. I'm going to use my little kickstand on my Sadio case here. I Just go to my channel, search HTC One M8 Sadio and you'll find it. But um. 
So now we're streaming this video off of our G2 wireless reader um, media player or a streaming device here. And there's no lag. It is playing smoothly and it's connecting to a server. Oh, this is where it kicked me off. This was the last game where it just said, nope, beta's over, you're done. But now we're going to try the hard one. I highly doubt this is going to work, but we're going to try the 4K video with Dice Player. All right, so far, and I need to turn the brightness down so you, the camera will pick it up better. Dude, that's I, that, that's 4K. Like, this video is recorded in 4K with my Sony 4K camcorder, but it's playing back smoothly. And let's go ahead and seek forward. Dude, there wasn't even a second lag. This thing is providing the content without any lag at all. That is freaking awesome. So now let's um let's go to the flash drive because right now we're using the SD card. Let's go to the flash drive and now my device is wanting to... You know what? Let's not even do that. Let's just use a different device. Let's just use our Nexus 7 here. This is running the Android L preview that I did a video on. So I uh, hope their app doesn't have any problems on Android L. A lot of apps are. So Kingston, go ahead and install that. All right, so... Go through all this, press the back button. Oh, Dice Player was messing up. So yes, I need to go ahead and report that. But uh, we need to connect this thing to the internet so we're not, we don't make this video incredibly long. I tried to make it short, but I usually fail at that. So let's just close out Dice Player. You go to the settings here, and then if you scroll down, you will see a lot of things. This thing is pretty awesome. You can even connect a little mobile 3G USB dongle to it and use this as a little Wi-Fi hotspot. So that is just absolutely awesome. This thing picks up 2.4 gigahertz. So we're gonna go ahead and connect to our network here and type in our password. All right, we're gonna hit the join button and then you're gonna see that this thing, well, it's rebooting it. So it's gonna take it a minute. Let's go ahead and fast forward. All right, the light is on, so now we should be able to connect to our Wi-Fi, which we did right there. And I'm going to actually go ahead and let this forget this network right here. And so now we can still go in here and mess with all this stuff. So like this Android, or no, let's go back to the USB. And when I press the auto connect button, it says it turned on and then it says please reconnect to it. And the little light right there goes off and then it comes back on and the option's not sticking, so that might just be a bug with the fact that this release uh, was just came out for this device. So stay tuned for updates on that. I will update the description. Um, it says it's connected to the Wi-Fi right there, but when I connect to my actual router, uh, it doesn't see it. It's just not there. So let's go ahead and use that USB stick right there, and then we're going to play one more video, and then we're going to end this. So don't show again. This is a different device, so I had to choose don't show again and with the default Android player it is doing a little bit of lagging so let's go ahead and install dice player I know they just updated to support Android L oh okay there's no bug with this this is working fine we're talking to this thing right now as you can see with my Wi-Fi there I'm connected to this little guy right here but I'm still able to go to the Play Store and download apps. So I can download an app like Speed Test, and I'm downloading this app right now using Wi-Fi, and you can see the little light right there flashing. So you're gonna need to connect all of your devices to this thing. I don't know if they will ever be able to make it towards this thing talks directly to your router, and you don't have to connect your device to this. You just connect your devices to the normal router that you always have, and then the app can see that it's there. So, but as of right now, you're going to need to connect your devices to the signal that's coming from here. And the good thing about this is you can actually secure this signal so that nobody can just go up to it and connect to it. So that's pretty good news right there. That's not too bad. We're getting a link speed of 72 megabits per second from this thing to that. 
which isn't bad. I would love to see a five gigahertz model in the future that maybe supports dual band at like 300 megabits per second or even wireless AC at, you know, a thousand megabits per second. That would be awesome. To secure your device right here, you'll just open the app up and then you'll go to settings right here. And then when you go down, you will see security and you can turn security on and then set the password. I'll do Dr. Pepper. And then confirm the password one more time with Dr. Pepper. And then save. Please reconnect. Okay, so now there's going to be a new signal coming from this thing that is secured. So it's trying to connect to my normal Wi-Fi. So let's go there. And now here it is. That same signal, but it's secured. And the password Dr. Pepper should get us to connect to it and now we can use internet since this thing's talking to our router getting the internet from our router and then giving it back to you uh, a good thing about that is when that usb dongle comes into play you can stick a verizon sprint t-mobile any usb dongle in there and then this works as a little wi-fi hotspot and you can use, still use any sd card to play back your media on all of your devices i've noticed that on the battery I've had this thing charging for over a day now, and it says that it's more than 50%. So they could release a firmware update. This is just 2.000 uh, that gives you the accurate, you know, exactly what that is. And also for the SSID, if you don't like this, you could change it to something like Josh. Let's do that, actually. Uh, I don't know. No, I'm not going to change it. That way I'll have a hard time figuring out which signal this is. But as you saw, 1080p played back fine. Even 4K played back fine from this SD card right here. And also, one more thing that I didn't know. I noticed it had a Ethernet port, but you can actually take, like, uh, if you're in college and you only have a plug, you don't have a Wi-Fi hotspot to connect to, you can actually plug this in like you would pretend this is your laptop or something, plug the ethernet cable into there, and this will create a little hotspot that your phone can connect to, and then you can use the USB port since you're not using a USB 3G dongle, and you can use that SD card. So you've got two options for expanding storage to capacities that are just ginormous, and you can play back 1080p MKVs with no trouble at all. So you can install this app right here on your Nvidia Shield and hook the HDMI cable up to your TV and play back 1080p content just fine while you have this sitting on your shelf. I actually have a shelf in my living room and I have a charger that goes into the front of it right here and I keep this on all the time. So at any given moment, I can just pick a video to play, use Dice Player for example, and here I am watching that video. I'm just playing hill climb racing here. No lag at all. It's actually very awesome. The video was longer than I wanted it to be, but I wanted to go ahead and cover everything that there was to talk about with this little guy. From my experience over the last few days with this thing, it's been a pleasure. I truly like this thing a lot. The only thing I wish is that when this thing was connected to your Wi-Fi, that you could still connect all your devices to that same network this is connected to, and it would just, you would be able to talk to each other, but you've actually got to connect to the signal that this thing's putting out, and you still have internet. And this thing's only putting out 2.4 gigahertz when this thing can pick up 5 gigahertz, and with my 5 gigahertz network right here, I'll go ahead and press on it, I'm getting 117 upstairs. I get 433 downstairs when I'm near my router. And then if I run the app like speed test. I should get much better speeds than when I was getting when I was connected to this device right here. So as you can see, I'm upstairs. I'm not in my living room. I would get a little over 120 if I was downstairs, but I'm not. So if I go to my results here. You can see that 122 from my router is something that is, it's capable of. Now, you could theoretically connect back to your 5 gigahertz network, but then when you want to stream content from this guy, you connect to the 2.4 gigahertz this thing's putting out. If it put out 5 gigahertz, I would have no problem connecting most of my devices to this guy without connecting them directly to my router. So, 
That's all I've got to say. Links to purchases will be in the description below. Please let me know whether you enjoyed the video or you didn't enjoy the video by clicking the appropriate buttons below. If you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing for more videos like this. Please follow me on Twitter and Instagram. I tweeted earlier that I was making two videos today. So if you want to know when a video is coming out before it comes out, just follow me on Twitter and you'll find out. And follow me on Instagram to still see some <laughs> sometimes silly videos and etc. This is what Josh doing them out.